Hello, and welcome to the Needham Say More podcast. I'm Aaron Pressman. And I'm Doug Fox. Thanks so much for joining us. And uh, we have like a little news uh, update to give you about uh, a very expensive project coming up for Needham. The Massachusetts School Building Authority decided uh, just the other day that they would uh, participate in a project to redo the Pollard School, uh, the big middle school over on Harris Ave, a very expensive project. And uh, the MSBA has a lot of projects and a lot of applications, so this was definitely not a sure thing. I think Lexington got turned down three or four times before they got accepted to redo their high school wow. project uh, earlier this year. So this is really good news for Needham. Yep. And the expectation is it is that they could cover up to 20% of the project cost of Pollard, um, which uh, approximately $62 million, they think, we could get from the state. Um, that'll give you a sense of the cost of the overall project. Um, but that's still a significant Let's, amount. We can talk about the whole project. One, just one last thing on the MSBA is technically they sort they have this formula where they cover different amounts of construction based on the income of the town. Needham rel- relatively wealthy gets a lower reimbursement. I think technically the reimbursement is something like a third, but they exclude a lot of uh, things that you want to include in a school and certain kinds of costs that we have to pay and planning and stuff. So uh, it ends up being like on the... Um, uh, recent elementary school project it ends up being about twenty percent that we yeah. get back, even though sort of it's technically helpful. Piece it's of helpful paper, we have that recent comparison, right? So that you know to set proper expectations. Um, I also believe that although there's a high likelihood we're going to get it now that we have been put into it, we may not get it exactly when we want it. We still could. They still might limit certain numbers per year or whatever. We could potentially if you know, we could end up having to wait maybe a year later than we might want on it to get that money. I think that's pretty, it's pretty unlikely. There sort of is a standard, assuming that the town does its part of like, um, you know, putting in the planning it needs to and putting the overrides on the dates it needs to. Usually it it will follow the the, the schedule. They actually, uh, where is this? Oh, here it is. Uh, the school committee um, put out a schedule which says, May town meeting would be a vote at town meeting to fund a feasibility study. I think they're talking about $4 million. Then October 2026 would be when town meeting would vote to fund the construction. Uh, And then November 2026 is when the debt exclusion override would happen and construction would begin in June 2028. And it would not open until September 2031 on this current uh, plan. Yeah. And, and I, I did the math that that means that const- when construction would be starting in 2028, that current second and third graders right now will be in seventh and eighth grade at that point in time. And additionally, if you are in kindergarten or first grade right now, you would be at Pollard during the construction. Um, but when it actually opens in 2031, it would be primarily kids that aren't even in school yet. It would be, yes, it would be kindergartners currently, but it would be third and fourth graders when it opens as a sixth, seventh, and eighth grade school in 2031. Well, that is good math to know. Uh, you and I will not have any children or probably even any grandchildren. You're very, very far uh, out of that. Um, well, maybe grandchildren, who knows? Um the, the interesting thing on this is, and, and Aaron and I did this subject already once before when the master planning was going on in 2020, and I have still felt in conversations with not just general people going around town, but even town meeting members and people in leadership, so many of the people really are in the dark on the plans and the path of what schools we're going to do and when. So I think it's also worth revisiting that as part of uh, as as part of this podcast as well. Well, if you take a if you like pull the camera all the way back, it was way back in the year two thousand when Needham first started realizing that hey, all the schools are outdated and need to be replaced, and uh, there was a thirty one million dollar override to reconstruct both the Elliott School and the Broadmeadow School. Too bad we didn't do a few more schools back then since Sunita Sunita Williams cost more than double that just for Sunita Williams. So 
Since then, we've slowly been working our way towards updating, renovating, increasing the size of all the schools. Uh, there was a little fly in the ointment when uh, Newman's HVAC system failed, and that was, I think, almost like a $30 million, 20, 20 or $30 million project. We had to build a temporary school in the parking lot and everything. That was, was a very- Was Ash project. there then? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, both, both of my kids were there. That was that yeah. was an interesting year. They, they, actually, they actually loved the temporary school. It was very- They were know, amazing. And, oh, yeah. yeah. They, were, they were, I think they were the best modulars I've ever seen. Um, I think the more that it was the one year, I mean, we, we were walking distance from the school. It was the one year that uh, they took the bus because there was kind of no room really to do drop off in cars that year, you know, because of the, all the modules in the parking lot. So that's probably more how they remember it. And so we've done a lot of work. We did a lot of work on the high school and other elementary schools that have been rebuilt and so on. But so we really have three schools left that are a problem. The Mitchell School, which is an elementary school. Up, a, up on the hill overlooking the high school that is like from the 1950s and really in need of a lot of work. Pollard Middle School, which has had different additions and fixes and has like modulars, which are past their uh, general time of use uh, on it. And then the High Rock School, which originally was an elementary school and then was converted into the sixth grade center. And now we're also talking about what to do with that in this plan. Yeah, and I yeah. think- The High Rock one is more about it's more about the fact that in the plan, we're going to convert it back to an elementary school that would require some work. I think it, it, it's in very good shape as a sixth grade or, or, or are there, I think I might've seen there was some, sh some issues with programming space there at High Rock currently, even for sixth grade, right? Is that? Yeah. I think the issue with the High Rock school is it was designed as an elementary school. So there are some weird things like the size of the gym is a little weird for oh, yeah. sixth Tiny. graders. Yeah. Um, and on some years, which we are not we are not really having now, but on some years when there were like 450 or more kids in a grade, it was really overcrowded. Um, I think now we're down, but since COVID, you know, we're, we're, we're well down below that. So the overcrowding is less of an issue, but it is an aging building and it probably does need some updates. If we, we I don't want to like, we, I think we should explain the whole plan before we talk about why we might need totally. to convert yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, High Rock back into an elementary school. But so with these three schools to do, you know, then came the complicated study process to figure out like what order to do them in, uh, or to do them at all, or how you know how to how to how to uh, how to proceed. It was amazing, and I mean, I, I would urge anyone that has any question about the current path in the plan to go back and look. I I, I feel like there were what there, were there seven scenarios. Like, least, there might have been yeah. even more, like sub variations of each one of the scenarios that were looked at. Um, and Mitchell is the school that's most in need, but there were challenges with updating Mitchell because there was no place for those kids to go. There's no room to add modulars to house all those kids. So uh, that's what led, I think, to the efficiency of the Pollard being first with the six through eight, even though Mitchell is in is in dire need based on the the studies. There's two, there's two big issues with Mitchell. One thing is if you built Mitchell today for the number of kids that are in it. It would have to be way bigger according to all standards, you know, the state standards and the way schools are built today. So it would have a much bigger footprint. And Mitchell right now has those beautiful fields. My kids played soccer on them sometimes. And it's right in the middle of a, of a, of a neighbor, you know, a very residential neighborhood. So one challenge with Mitchell, if you just wanted to like rebuild Mitchell and stop there or do that first, uh, as Doug says, yes, you would have to pay $40 million to build a temporary school somewhere to house the kids for a year or two. And then the second thing is you would probably have, cause there's not enough room to sort of build a new school next to the old school. And you would probably have to impinge a lot on those fields, take away some of that playground and fields. If you built a school to house the same number of kids that Mitchell kind of houses today or more. So um, again, so then, so then you start like moving the pieces around the board. What can you do? So many pieces. Yeah. So many pieces. And that High Rock School, which is today our sixth grade center and used to be an elementary school, could be in some scenarios, if you do Pollard first, a temporary school for all the Mitchell kids to go to. And it's all, it's basically, you know, wouldn't need very much work. It's all ready for that to kind of happen. Yeah, it's it's a small, small dollar. I think it was like half a million or something. Yeah, to, yeah. To, it's to, almost to nothing. Ready. Compared to 40 million for building a temporary school, which you're just yeah. going to use and then tear down. Totally 
money wasted. And the location for that, right? Like I, I believe one of them was DeFazio was a potential location, right? Yeah. Which has a whole bunch of other factors that come out of, you know, that. So, right. so, so after a lot of study and a lot of debate, certainly among the school, among the school committee, the decision, the preferred option is an option which redoes the Pollard school and makes a big addition to the Pollard school so that the sixth grade can actually be there. It will still be sort of in its own kind of wing of facilities with some shared facilities, but its own wing of classrooms, basically. So it still has some of that separation that you get with a sixth grade center. And then the next thing that would happen is uh, the kids. So we wouldn't need to use High Rock anymore for sixth grade. So the kids from Mitchell would all go to High Rock while we tore down the Mitchell school and redid it there as, a, as only a three section school. So that's not as the full capacity of what we could have there, but it preserves the fields. It preserves the neighborhood feel and that fit in the neighborhood. And then the third piece is, if it turns out that that's not enough capacity for elementary schools in Needham, then we have the High Rock building ready and available to use as a sixth elementary school. I think another piece of this that's very appealing to me, certainly when I was on the school committee is, this flexibility, like we don't really know how much our, what our enrollment is going to do. If you look strictly at the demographers forecasts, it's pretty, it's sort of like has the enrollment eventually starting to go down in the next 20 and 30 years. So building a huge Mitchell school that we might not even need that takes away the fields that kind of, you know, impinges on the neighborhood would really be sad if it turned out that we didn't even need that space. And that, so the plan that uses High Rock eventually as a potential elementary school is much more flexible and less costly. But the big but in that is that if we do get to the point and we're talking 2037 of when Mitchell would reopen. Right. And then if High Rock is also an elementary school at that point, we would finally need to do the long overdue. What is the term for rezoning, redistricting? Yeah. Um, which would move some kids around to different schools. And I know past town leadership didn't want to touch that with a 10 foot pole um, because people buy a house for a specific school. And if they're going to get moved around, but you know, like there's a, there's definitely, there's definitely a lot of inefficiencies right now with where kids go. I mean, there are, you know, as a parent of Newman, there are kids that are going to Sunita Williams that are so much closer to Newman, right? And yeah, so there, there, there just could be a lot of shifting, um, which would be helpful, even though I think some parents may not be fond of it. I do think that's certainly a challenge and also would be a big communications challenge to make sure, because I mean, you know, I'm, you're talking about 2037, so we have a lot of time to <laughs> warn people who are having houses and having children, buying houses and having children and stuff about that situation. I think yes. the biggest... The biggest question about this particular plan, one you just hit on, which is Mitchell, a very old and aging school, does not get uh, redone for, I can't do the math in my head, you know, more than 10 years uh, in this scenario. And number two, a lot of money is spent at the Pollard, which, you know, we have heard some pushback from finance committee members and others, like maybe the Pollard has had a lot of work done to it and just leave that the way it is maybe leave High Rock the way it is and just do the Mitchell School as sort of like the super low cost option. Yeah, I mean, was that not one of the, was it not one of the seven scenarios way back when to keep everything as is? I mean, it... Yes, it was yeah. one of the scenarios to keep everything as is. You know, the problem is that the Pollard School, it sort of is a um, unrealistic view of what the Pollard School can do in its current incarnation with those modulars out back and uh, some of the dated systems and stuff that are there. So, you know, it is, it's sort of, is something you can argue to exist, but it's not necessarily a good idea. Um, I don't know how you feel about it. I wanted to bring up at what some point, you know, there was this debate. This is like how I ended up on the school committee around 2005, 2006, 2007. Uh, it was very obvious that the Pollard was overcrowded and needed a lot of work. And the sixth grade was there. It was a three grade school then. And the town talked about building a second middle school at a cost of, but I'm bump, 40 to $50 million for the whole middle school. <laughs> and it was decided by the finance committee and some other people that 
uh, that would be too expensive, quote unquote, at that time. I felt like that was a ludicrous decision. I went, I, I like literally wrote a pamphlet and went to uh, <laughs> transit stops in Needham and handed it out and tried to like rally support for the middle school, but I was not successful. And so instead of a like 40 or $50 million middle school, they spent about 20, I think $23 million redoing High Rock School as a uh, sixth grade center. At the time, you know, I have like, here's Dan Gudekant's uh, explanation of it that he gave to town meeting in 2006. Uh, I recommend the High Rock School become an interim sixth grade center, providing the space and resources required to meet the needs of our youngest middle school students. I am also recommending the school committee continue discussions and plans for a new middle school. While it may be ideal to build a new middle school now, it is practical and prudent. While it may be ideal to build a new middle school now, it is practical and prudent to use High Rock for the sixth grade program until a new middle school can be considered. So what he was saying was, this is not the best solution. This is a short-term solution, and we really do need a new middle school. And of course, that was in 2006, and it was completely, you know, then we moved on to the next thing. And the price just keeps getting higher and higher and higher. And I mean, and just for example, when, when we were running the seven scenarios initially in 2020, the more expensive options were as much as 70 million more than this option. And this option at the time, shoot, actually, I don't know if I have what it was at the time. It was considerably um, less. But it's more than twice as much now to do it versus what we thought in 2020. Right. And I don't think we've given the number yet. So the number, you know, is 462 million. That's for overall, for for Pollard and Mitchell um, and the small revisions to High Rock. But just putting that in perspective, that is more than twice our current annual town budget of $214 million. So it's massive. So yeah. that's... And, and for example, when, when we were debating the middle school, uh, you know, now 15 years ago, um, and we did the $23 million, $22 million option, it at the, the at the peak, the amount it added to a re, the average residential tax bill, which was in the, would, would be in the year 2011, was $200. So if we had done double that project or triple that project, you were talking about like $400 or $600 in the peak year on the average homeowner's tax bill. Today, the numbers, which I don't think we have like the most up-to-date numbers yet, I'm sure Dave Davison will calculate that, the town's um, finance director, but you know, we're talking the peak year, it's going to be over a thousand dollars. I'm, I'm, I would bet maybe more on the average homeowner's tax bill in the peak year to do this gigantic project. And, and, and I mean, my memory is during that time frame, we all, we, we redid the library, right. That we put expenditures against, you know, I don't know how that compares. I mean, you know, var right, various projects have been done over the years, the library, uh, yeah. Memorial field, uh, t you know, town hall, um, uh, you know, the, uh, I forget what they call the building that's over on the corner of, um, South street and, uh, Dedham Ave there, the PSAB, the PSAB building. The you know, PSAB we, building. We did the field we did house. Some, yeah. But I, did, yeah. I, yeah. But the, I just, I remember the library at the time, you know, I mean, it did pass, but then I felt like right after we were doing override for the high school and it just felt like you prioritize the schools over that. And someone made a decision to move that up in the queue. So. Yeah. I mean, you know, hindsight is 2020. I, I feel like oh. it's unfortunate that we didn't do it when it would have been much more affordable, but that doesn't, that doesn't help us at all in the present day whatsoever. You know, we have this aging facility with a lot of physical plant problems and what are we going to do about it? Yeah. And uh, I, th I think it's just very important to, to have more awareness of what, you know, what the plan is and what the path is and why, um, you know, we talk all the time about the challenges with communicating to the constituents, right? Overall citizens, but also, I mean, I think, I think there's even a lot of town meeting members that are in the dark that I think we'll start getting up to speed now that some of these items are coming before us starting in May. Um, yeah. So, so, you know, the finance committee did an unusual thing where they have, um, you use the reserve fund to hire their own consultant 
who was going to do some financial calculations, I believe, about um, how much revenue, how much, how much you could spend on a debt override project and stay within some of the town's um, debt ratios that we historically stay with, stay within. Um, because what Dave Davison does is he models the projects that are on paper. Uh, he doesn't do hypotheticals and he, he doesn't like to answer hypothetical questions. Uh, he was peppered with questions recently about what would it take for the town to lose its AAA rating. And his answers were mostly like, you know, it's not really, we don't know, uh, probably not this. I don't know. You know, I don't mean to say he was being ignorant. I, I just think he doesn't like to answer hypothetical questions. And there's not a lot of sign that anything the town is doing or contemplating would jeopardize its AAA rating. I, I think we also need to just factor in that these are schools that the town needs that has to be done. Um, and I mean, I know we'll never look back, but if we had done the new middle school back in 2005, when you were, you know, out walking the transit stations, say we did pay a higher interest rate on that, it still would have been the smarter move long-term. So I don't know if we can let that be the sole determination on whether we do these because we're going to need them and they're just going to keep getting more and more and more expensive. You know, and I say that we say that as parents of who will not have kids, you know, who will benefit from any of these, but we will absolutely be paying the taxes from them. But it just feels like the smart move overall for the town long term. And the other the other sort of very complicated factor to me and my thinking is, you know, the MBTA Communities Act is requiring the town to zone for a lot more you know, hundreds and hundreds of new housing units, which may or may not be built, but they're not going to be allowed to be restricted in the way that some building is restricted to, you know, senior citizens or anything like that. Families are going to be allowed to live in these houses, and that could have a big impact on the number of kids in schools. But it's just so hard to uh, model. You know, we, we don't even know if the zoning will be such that developers will want to build any housing. Yeah. We've had a lot of zoning changes in the past with no change. Nobody knows. I mean, I think the zoning that gets approved is definitely a lot more appealing than what we have right now. But equally, there's a whole bunch of other towns that also have much more appealing zoning. So where do the developers choose to place their bets and where don't they? And also, we're also in a high interest rate environment right now, which at least for now will limit um, the impact. Uh, but yeah, it, yeah it, it's it's another reason that we want, we will definitely want more flexibility in our schools for 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 whatever could be coming down the pike it does seem that needham i don't i mean needham may be getting the housing prices have gotten so high it may have moved out of this zone but needham really was in the sweet zone for a long time where the housing prices were sort of high but not insane and the schools were really good maybe not the very very best in the state but very very good and so that attracted a ton of people here with kids and and helped um the school uh, enrollment grow faster than the rest of the state for years and years and years. So to me, that indicates that possibly when interest rates are lower and times are right for it, uh, Needham might be an appealing place to build a lot of this MBTA community's uh, multifamily housing. I, that, that is my assumption as well. But, that you know, it's um, well, we will see what will happen. Um, you know, I, I spoke about what years the kids will be part of Pollard, but I think I will also say, that if you are in a Mitchell school district, if you have a one-year-old, the one-year-old will be moving in fifth grade over to High Rock. And if you have babies that are not yet born yet, they will be part of that process. And then eventually moving into the new Mitchell. Definitely a lot of moving pieces on this one. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that wraps it up. It's like storming outside. So... Hopefully a tree won't follow me before I complete this uh, recording. Sounds good. Yeah, no, I, I lost internet this morning. So there's a question of whether we were going to be able to do this, but glad <laughs> we were able to get it in. Um, but thank you so much for spending time with us again. Really important topic. Happy to help spread the word about it. And we'll be working on some exciting new subjects coming up in 2024. So for the Needham Same More podcast, I'm Aaron Pressman. And I am Doug Fox. Thanks so much for joining us.